Hey everyone, this is Josh Williams and this video is going to cover how to create a DCP and a DCP package for delivering your cinema project to a theatrical screening. Now I went through many tutorials online trying to figure out how to create a DCP using the correct settings and uh, it was a complete mystery. And I'm hoping that this video will help you to not only create the DCP you need, but also create it into the package you can deliver to the theater and ingest into their digital projector systems. I'm going to be doing this in DaVinci Resolve 17. So if you want to follow along, you can download that from blackmagicdesign.com. They have two versions. There's the studio version, which is $299, requires a license key. Um, the other one is free to download and you can get it for both Windows and Mac. I am going to be doing this on a MacBook. I believe some of the software I'm using for DCP transfer might only be a Mac edition. So at that point, you'll only be able to follow along on a Mac. Another thing to consider would be the sound requirements for DCP. Blackmagic Design's DaVinci Resolve has been a little particular about how I'm setting up mine. I would recommend doing it one way for three different scenarios. Uh, most likely, if you have a DCP that you're going to create, you might have a 5.1 surround embedded into a master file, or you may still have the individual stems for your surround sound, or you just have a stereo track that goes with your film. In this situation, I would recommend that you set up a 5.1 surround uh, one channel if you have the embedded audio in your film, or if you're doing stems or a stereo channel, just set up the six tracks and do a 5.1 surround bus in DaVinci Resolve. And the six tracks would be in the order of left, right, center, LFE, left surround, right surround. Then next, what I'll do is I will move the stereo track down to the left channel. Then I will click on the audio on the left channel using the option key and dragging down to the right channel, which creates a copy. Now I go into the left channel, right click and select clip attributes, and I'll change the format from stereo to mono. Now I'll make sure that on the left channel that only the left audio one is selected. Now I'll go down to the right channel and right click and go to clip attributes. And I will switch that to format stereo to mono as well. And then make sure that channel two is selected for the right side. Now we're gonna to wanna to go up to Fairlight in the menu option and select bus format. Here we're gonna switch the bus one to 5.1 surround. Now I can delete the original blank stereo channel and I should only have channels one through six with the left, right, center, LFE, left surround and right surround. Then you're gonna to wanna to go into the Fairlight menu again and under bus assignment, you wanna make sure that all of the tracks that are in your session are going to the correct bus. This can be a little tricky at times if you need to make adjustments to the assignments you'll have to click on the bus out first, then go to the channels that you want assigned and click there to either unassign or assign to that particular bus. Once you have the audio in, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the panning is correct. Once you look at the mixer settings for panning, you can adjust the first track for the left audio all the way to the top left, the second track for the right audio all the way to the top right, the center channel can be left as is in the default center position at the top. As you go down to LFE, same thing, leave that there. And then the left surround, you will drag to the bottom left and right surround, you will drag to the bottom right corner. Next, go ahead and set your in and out points on the timeline of where you want to begin and end your render. I can set those here in the delivery tab of DaVinci Resolve by pressing the I for the in and O for the out where I've made my selections. Next, we're going to choose the preset for our export render. I'm going to select custom, and then I'm going to choose the name and folder location where I want the DCP file to be exported to. I will make sure the export video box is checked, and then I will choose DCP as the format and Kakadu JPEG 2000 as the codec. Now we will select the type, but this takes some important information to determine which type settings you will use for the resolution. 
If you don't provide the correct resolution on your DCP package to the theater, it is possible that you could have black bars on the sides or the top and bottom of your image, or if it's even too large, the screen picture could be cut off. The flat aspect ratio of 1.85 to 1 is a typical full screen view that you would see in a normal theater or television at home, completely fills the image on the screen. A scope video aspect ratio of 2.39 to 1 is typically a wider, uh, often used like an anamorphic views, and will still fill the screen on the correct scope theater screen, uh, otherwise may have some black bars on the top or bottom. Both the flat and the scope aspect ratio will completely fill the screen on a matching flat or scope screen. Some of the theaters will have the ability to change the mode that their projector presents in, uh, but I would not recommend relying on that. Uh, they may have a reason why they don't want to change it, and you just want to make sure that you reach out to them and have the correct format uh, and bring that to them. For this example, the film will be presented on a 2K flat screen of 1920 by 1080 with a 1.85 to 1 aspect ratio. The frame rate will default to 24 frames per second. Now be aware that if your original film project was filmed at 23.976 frames per second instead of 24 frames per second, um, you are likely to run into some presentation issues on a digital theater projection system. Um, they're typically a 24 frames per second system for both video and audio. The DaVinci Resolve software will automatically default to 24 frames per second when it renders out, but in my experience, the audio remains at 23.976. So what that means is that your video is playing slightly faster than your audio. And eventually over time, your audio will slowly become out of sync with the video. In my experience where people have filmed in the 23.976 frames per second um, and has it presented on the theater in 24 frames per second, um, most of the audience didn't even notice that there was an issue, but the people that edited and were closely watching the dialogue matching in the sync process um, noticed it slipping off slightly as it got to the end. So if you do intend to present your film project in a DCP at a cinema theater, it's recommended that you use video capture settings at 24 frames per second as well as audio capture at 24 frames per second. To ensure trouble-free playback on a projection system, I've seen recommendations to set the bitrate at around 200, which is still considered high quality. Next, we will want to click on Advanced Settings to expand the options contained there. Click the Color Space Tag dropdown and select P3-DCI. Now click the Gamma Tag dropdown and select Gamma 2.6. These should be your theatrical corresponding settings. The last step is just to make sure that your audio settings are correct if you're doing a 5.1 surround. Make sure that the export audio box is checked. Typically, films will be in a sample rate of 48,000 and 24 bit depth. Choose your desired output track format. Mine are usually bus 1, 5.1 for surround. Now you can click add to render queue and then click the render button on the right hand column it was added to. Now, if you were color grading on a typical monitor that's like Rec. 709 with a Gamma 2.4, and you're sitting here watching this P3 DCI Gamma 2.6 DCP render, it's probably going to look weird. The colors will look off. It might even look black and white with a bunch of weird yellow or something. Uh, that's completely normal. After this process is rendered out, you can go back into DaVinci Resolve under the Media tab, import the new DCP file that you just rendered and you can pull it up and preview it and play the video and audio and make sure everything looks and sounds like it should. So now that we have the DCP rendered, we wanna get it packaged so that we can deliver it to the theater. And before you do that, you're gonna to wanna to contact the particular theater that you intend to screen at and make sure of their acceptable formats. Sometimes a DCP package can only be received in a special three and a half inch hard drive that has rails on the side and they will slide it into a SATA slot and that's how they will pull the hard drive up and start copying footage off of it. Um, in other cases, and in my experience, I've been able to just copy it to a USB drive and they can simply connect it to a USB port on their projector and ingest it that way. Um, I personally recommend if you're going to use one, use an SSD drive because they're much faster, especially if there's a chance you can do an advanced test screening at the theater. Uh, they can get it copied over sometimes in as quick as 15 minutes and um, you can be ready to do it either a half hour later or the next morning uh, depending on how they're able to do it. So you have the DCP and now you have a drive to put it on. Where do we go next?
The universally accepted digital drive format is the Linux-based EXT2. I've searched around for some DCP package creation solutions. Uh, many companies will want to charge you $600 up to maybe $1,600 to create a DCP package for you. And in my research of finally bouncing through many forums, what I settled on and has worked multiple times for me without issues is the software by Cinematique called DCP Transfer. Now this software costs about $25 to have a setup fee and $25 for a license key. And this is a subscription-based software that you can cancel after you're done using or continue paying $25 a month if you want to keep using it. Now go ahead and connect the USB drive that you intend to format for the DCP package. After installing DCP transfer, you'll want to open the program and enter your activation license if you haven't already done so. The layout is pretty simple. The top half of the screen, you're going to hit the plus button to add the DCP file you want copied to the drive. You can validate it by clicking the validate checkbox and then clicking validate source. Once you have clicked the plus button on the top screen and added the DCP file, click the destination drive on the bottom for the DCP package to be formatted on and then select transfer DCPs. Select the validation options if you'd like to validate it. When the DCP formatting and transfer is completed, you should receive a message that the DCP is suitable for delivery. So I hope this video has been helpful for creating a DCP or your DCP package and get your film out to festivals or your screening premiere. If you like this video, you can help me out by subscribing. And if you want to see more content in the future, hit the notification bell and it'll alert you when I have new videos on cinematography, color grading, and other things like product reviews. Till then, see you guys soon. Take care.